Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this reading you should be able to 1. Describe the mechanism of the human breathing system and gas exchange. 2. Describe asthma in terms of one possible cause, prevention and treatment. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand here? Well, gas exchange means swapping gases. We are trying to get rid of carbon dioxide out of our blood and are swapping it for oxygen instead. Mechanism is the way that something takes place or how something works. So here we're interested in describing how the human breathing system works in gas exchange. We're also interested in understanding a possible cause for asthma, how asthma can be prevented, and how asthma can be treated. Reading chapter 30, Human Breathing, continued. Picking it up at page 341, starting at the heading, Mechanism of Breathing. Breathing or ventilation. In hospital, people are often put on ventilators to help them breathe. Is normally an involuntary process. This means that it's under your unconscious control. It goes on in known to you. An adult at rest normally breathes about 12 to 18 minutes times per minute. It's important to remember these figures and to realize that this will vary from person to person depending on whether they are fit or perhaps they might be smokers. The processes responsible for breathing are outlined below. In the exam we have to remember that when you are describing breathing you not only have to describe breathing in but also breathing out. At the side. Inhalation means breathing in. I-N in inhalation, I-N in breathing in. Inhalation. The brain controls the rate of breathing. It's actually the medulla oblongata is the part of the brain that controls the rate of breathing. Normally a message is sent from the brain to the intercostal muscles. These are located between your ribs and the diaphragm. These muscles use energy in the form of ATP to contract or to work. And what they do is they contract and they pull up your ribs. For this reason, inhalation is said to be an active process because it involves a little bit of effort. The ribs are pulled up and out, so your chest enlarges, and the diaphragm curves down. You suck it in. The volume, or the size of the chest cavity, or the thorax, increases. The pressure in the chest cavity decreases. The external air pressure outside your body is now higher than the air pressure inside, so as a result air is forced into the lungs. This is called inhalation or inspiration. Turning to page 342. Exhalation. Over at the side. Exhalation means breathing out. EX for exhalation. EX in the word exit. Back to exhalation. To exhale, the process is reversed as outlined below in points 1 to 5. Note that nervous control is not necessary for exhalation. So, 1. The intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax. <sighs> as a result, exhalation is a passive process not requiring energy, not requiring a massive amount of energy or effort. The ribs move down and in, and the diaphragm curves back up. The volume or the size of the chest cavity, or your thorax, decreases or gets less. The pressure in the chest cavity is now very high. Think of pushing in the handle in a bicycle pump. When you lower the volume, the pressure will increase. 
air is forced out of the lungs. The effect of exercise on the rate of breathing. Exercise increases the rate of respiration. Remember, respiration is a chemical reaction getting energy out of your food. And the more exercise you do, the more energy your cells will need, especially your muscle cells. So it's logical that exercise would increase the rate of respiration. As a result, the body experiences lower levels of available oxygen and obviously higher levels of carbon dioxide that we have to get rid of. The brain detects the increased level of exercise and increases the level of breathing. Exhalation, which is normally a passive process, not needing any energy, becomes active now as a result of the exercise. And in addition, extra muscles might have to be used to increase the depth of breathing. So while you might expect that after exercise a person would be taking more breaths, sometimes they might even take less breaths than when they are at rest because of the fact that they are taking deeper breaths. Added extra. Breathing is normally an involuntary or unconscious process. However, the rate of breathing can be controlled consciously for a short time. This occurs when we control our breathing as we speak, sing or swim. The composition of inhaled or exhaled air. Composition means what's it made of. In our day we used to make up compositions which were stories we made up. Now they're called essays. So here composition means the makeup of inhaled air and exhaled air. In other words what gases are present in inhaled air and what gases are present in the air you breathe out. The composition of inhaled and exhaled air for a person at rest is given in the following table. Now this can be strange for some of you to understand because we are normally led to believe that you breathe in oxygen and you give out carbon dioxide. That's to keep life simple. But when you think about it, you breathe in oxygen but there must be a certain amount of oxygen left in the breath you breathe out. Because if you put a paper bag over your mouth and you take a breath in and then you take a breath out, you shouldn't be able to take any more breaths. But you can keep breathing uh, in a paper bag for a length of time, as anybody might know who've, who've used one. And um, so you must be breathing out oxygen. So here, 21% of the air that we breathe in is oxygen. That's about a fifth of the air that we breathe in is oxygen. There will be some oxygen in our breath that we breathe out. 14% of the air that we breathe out actually contains oxygen. One might ask, where is the missing percentage? Where is the missing 7%? Well, this missing percentage actually goes into your blood in gas exchange and is taken to your cells to be used in respiration. Carbon dioxide is also present in the air that you breathe in. 0.04% of the air that we breathe in is carbon dioxide. This sounds awfully small, but a small increase can lead to the greenhouse effect and global warming. So we have to keep control of the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Obviously, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air we breathe out increases. Why did it increase? Well, it was made as a result of respiration in our cells. It entered the blood and we exhaled it as part of gas exchange. Now, the water concentration in the air we breathe in is usually low. But obviously this depends on where you are. So I prefer to say that the water concentration is variable. Because obviously if you're in a desert, the water concentration will be low. Whereas if you're in the Amazon rainforest, then the water concentration will be much higher or a damp day in Ireland. Whichever way it goes, when you breathe out, the water concentration will be after increasing. Breathing disorders. Asthma. Now the symptoms of asthma are the signs. Now, this means how you would know if you had it. 
what would a person observe about you that would indicate that you were showing the symptoms of asthma. This is quite often confused with the cause of asthma, so just be careful here. So the symptoms can include noisy or wheezy breathing or a feeling of breathlessness. Now, what is the cause of asthma? Well, the external cause, usually in the atmosphere. The exact causes of asthma are not clear, but attacks may be triggered by substances called allergens that are inhaled. Common allergens, things that you're allergic to, include pollen, animal dander, which is basically tiny scales from skin or hair or feathers, like dandruff. Those of you into horses, this has to be groomed off using a dandy brush. House dust can cause it, and dust mites, which are little creatures that live on house dust. These are the causes of asthma. Terribly important that they be remembered, because they are often asked. Lung infections and exercise, especially in cold air, stress or anxiety can also contribute to causing it. But the main causes that we need to remember are the common allergens. Turning to the next page, page 343. Internal causes. In an asthma attack, the lower bronchioles become inflamed and narrow or constricted. In the exam, it is no harm to give external causes and internal causes. For those of you who are able for a bit more, you might recall that the bronchioles are the one part of the breathing system that have no rings of cartilage to keep them open. This is why they can become restricted or narrow, making it difficult to breathe. Hence the feeling of breathlessness. About 10% of children just reading are asthmatic and the instance of asthma seems to be rising in developed countries. More than half of children affected by asthma grow out of it in their teenage years. Prevention. How do we prevent asthma? Asthmatic attacks may be prevented by DAW, identify and avoid those allergens are those conditions that trigger attacks. So obviously, if you're allergic to animal dander, then don't go near horses and dandy brushes. Tests can be undertaken to identify the precise allergens that affect an individual. In addition, preventative inhalers may be used. These prevent the bronchioles from reacting to the allergens. Basically, what we have to remember here, and it's quite acceptable in the exam, to give the prevention of asthma, to have it as an answer that you avoid the allergens or the conditions that trigger attacks. Now, how is the asthma treated? Now, the normal treatment from asthma is to inhale drugs. Now, you need to watch this. Take drugs means nothing. You could be on ecstasy. Answering this question side in the exam, you must state the type of drugs you're going to take to cure your asthma. So you must say that you're going to take drugs that cause the bronchioles to widen or cause the bronchioles to dilate or you're going to take bronchiodilator medicine. It is not enough to say that you're going to take drugs and it's also not enough to say that you're going to take your inhaler. You must, must actually state the type of medicine that's in that inhaler or the type of drugs that you're on. In addition, steroids may be inhaled to reduce inflammation and in severe cases, these drugs can be given by injection. Now that we have arrived at the end of our reading, have we achieved our objectives? At the end of this reading, you should be able to describe the mechanism of the human breathing system in gas exchange and be able to describe asthma 
in terms of one possible cause, prevention and treatment.